Good day everyone, my name's Emma. My name is Noemi. And we're reporting here live from the Philips Dynalite factory in Sydney, Australia. Today we're really excited to talk about some brand new uh, system features with you. Noemi, what's on the agenda today? Today we will talk about the benefits of DALI 2 and DTH tunable light and color control. Awesome, that sounds like a lot of acronyms, but I'm really excited to get stuck in and learn something new. All right, let's go. Let's go inside. All right, now I think it's pretty clear that lighting is more than just what we see, but it also impacts how we feel and how we function as well. Is that kind of what we're going to be covering today? Well, we are going to get a little bit more technical today, but um, specifically we are going to talk about DT8 and how it can make our lives easier, especially when commissioning tunable white or color control drivers. So Emma, what do you know about DALI? Um, I know that it is an open protocol mm -hmm. that enables two-way communication between different lighting control devices. Perfect. Yes. So it's also a digital protocol. In fact, DALI stands for Digital Addressable Lighting Interface. And uh, it was created by many manufacturers such as Signify in order to overcome uh, the 1 to 10 volts analog protocol challenges. It also brings us new uh, advantages, for example, faster installation. Now we have only one pair of cables, both for power and data. Um, it's also polarity agnostic, so it's quite simple. Um, also, we have a uh, second advantage, which is uh, more flexibility and scalability, uh, and scalability sorry, um, bringing us not only the broadcast control that 1 to 10 volts has, but also addressed uh, addressable control or also group control. So it's quite flexible, for example, if we are going to change the configuration of a room or of a building. And the third one was uh, greater control because now with this bi-directional communication, we will be able to see the driver status and uh, create some alarms and try to be more efficient with the system. So is it fair to assume then that DALI 2 just builds upon the principles of DALI 1? Yes, but uh, DALI has been constantly evolving, so it's not only a new version, but we want to remark here that it's also a certification process. So unlike DALI version 1, where each manufacturer certified their own products, now DALI version 2 established a protocol or a test, uh, some more detailed test, to certify not only the LED modules or the DALI bus or uh, yeah, the drivers, but also the application controllers, the input devices such as, for example, sensors, or even the power supply. So this basically makes it easier when talking about compatibility between different manufacturers. And what's more, there are new features with DALI 2. For example, the one that we are talking about today, the tunable white and the RGB color control uh, that we will see in a minute. So our Dynalet portfolio has two DALI 2 certified controllers. Let's first have a look at the DDVC 120 DALI. Here we have a one DALI universe controller, including the power supply. Thanks to the direct mapping between Dynet and DALI, we are also enabled to use 64 themes and 64 groups compared to the 16 limitation that uh, DALI standard has. We, has uh, we have a power supply included in the controller and also this small relay enables us to enhance energy savings by cutting off the 0.5 watt energy consumption from each driver when all the luminaires inside the controller are off. Now let's go for the DDVC 320 DALI. Okay, so here we have a more cost-effective solution because we have uh, for bigger projects a three universe controller. Now we can go up to 192 drivers. We have the same features of power supplies included. We have the DALI direct mapping with Dynet. We have the relays, but what's more? So we have an inbuilt ethernet port to securely communicate, for example, with our PDEC-S, which is our ethernet secure gateway. We also have a relay suitable for North America, so the UL924, which enables emergency lighting. So why is it important to have DALI 2 certified products? Well, basically for compatibility. Of course, DALI 2 is compatible with DALI 1 version, backwards compatibility applied, but we want to ensure that this compatibility, not only with the drivers, but also with other controllers, devices, and even buses or power supplies apply. So for us, it's really important to continue this development and support DALI 2 as uh, we will ensure that things work in my system. Awesome. And how do you know if a device is DALI 2 certified or not? Basically by the logo, because now with DALI 2, we are entitled to, to use the logo in all our products. 
But also, if you are not sure, you can also check the website in the DALI Alliance uh, web database, where all the devices with DALI 2 and even some of the DALI 1 uh, certification are listed. So, is there a scenario where it's suitable to use a DALI 1 product versus a DALI 2 product? Actually, the other way around, maybe, because DALI 2 certified products are entitled basically for the DALI 2 new features, like the ones that we will see today. But uh, of course, because of this backward compatibility, you will be able to use it in a system with DALI 1 products as well. All right, great. So now that we know the difference between DALI and DALI 2, what was that DT8 thing that you were speaking about earlier? Well, let's go downstairs and I will show you. So, before we move on with DT8, it's important to know that DALI is built on different parts. Like blocks. First block, or part 101, would be the standard requirements for the whole system, the whole DALI system, including, for example, the 16 volts or the 250 milliampers. A second block would be needed to define the part 102, which is basically to define the general requirements, but in this case, for the control gear, so for the driver. Now, if we want to control a LED module, a fluorescent or a halogen lamp, we would need a third block, like this one here, that defines specifically the lamp that we want to control. In this case, we will focus on LEDs, which makes more sense if we would like to add the fourth module, which is this one here, which is uh, exactly DT8, and defines the general requirements for color control. So all these blocks are independent, they do not overlap and contradict themselves, but together they form the module that we want to control, including the lamp and the driver in the DALI system. Cool. So if I wanted to use a system to control halogen bulbs, I couldn't just use these exact same blocks? No, you would need to change this blue module here, which defines LED modules, and we would need to replace it for halogen in this case. However, uh, halogen is not so really friendly when talking about color control, for, uh, and for that reason, we will only stick to LED modules today. Awesome. So if we want to do color control in our project, do we need a DT8 module? Not always. This is one of the options, but for example, Let's think about tunable white. Tunable white is really simple. It's a scale between warm white and cool white. And if we would like to remove this module, the only problem is that I would need to duplicate the amount of blocks like this one. I've got another one right here. Perfect. So your would be cool white, while mine would be warm white. If we want to achieve a color in between, we would need to tune our light outputs to achieve the preferred color. This means that we would need double the hardware double the DALI addresses, and double the power consumption. Also, presumably, we will increase the amount of DALI controllers if we will have a lot of luminaires like these ones, and the labor cost, because we will not only need to manufacture double the luminaires, but also install them on site. That doesn't sound very sustainable or cost efficient. <laughs> no, that's why you can get rid of that module. We won't need it anymore, because in this video, we will only focus in LED modules with DT8. So how would we go about commissioning this on site? So let's jump over System Builder, our commissioning tool, and I will show you. So here we have a simple Dynalite project where we can find an Ethernet gateway, also known as PDEC, to the DVC 120 DALI, which is our One Universe DALI 2 certified controller, and a keypad, in this case, the Antumbra display. I'll show you two examples on how to add DALI channels. First, I'm going to create an area for standard LED drivers, which can also be referred to as DT6. In this case, Tunable White will require two drivers, one for Cool White and another one for Warm White. Both drivers should be linked together, but it's important to identify them on site and confirm that they are controlling the correct lamp. As you can see here, it's possible to easily swap them if you make a mistake. For DT8 drivers, it's simpler, as a single driver will include both warm and cool channels. Besides, after dragging the physical channel, we'll see that it's already identified as tunable white. Okay, so now that we've created these channels, what can we do with them? The easiest would be creating scenes according to the ambience we want in a specific environment. Warm white, for example, will create a relaxed ambience, while cool white will make us more active. Signify already created some propositions uh, for light uh, that we can use, for example, in hospitals or care centers to enhance people's well-being. 
However, we could also use these themes in places where people spend so much time, such as uh, offices or schools, influencing how people feel. Yeah, and I, I think it's also important to remember that lighting affects the way that we see colour as well. So if you're an interior designer, for example, wood tones might appear richer under warm light, whereas whites and greys might pop a bit better under cool light. And the same can also be said for retail environments or anyone working with textiles as well. So it's good to have this flexibility in colours. Let's jump to System Builder again and see how to create themes in Tunable White. Back in System Builder, we see that for our DT6 area, we will need to adjust independently the cool and the warm white channels to have the desired outcome for our scenes or presets. Creating a purely cool scene is easy as we just need to switch off the warm white channel. Same happens when creating a purely warm scene, but in this case, we will switch off the cool channel. However, if we want any other combination, we will realize that it is not intuitive at all as there's a dependency between the channels. On the contrary, for ED8, we can independently adjust the color temperature in Kelvin and the channel level. Now I can create warm and cool presets more precisely and objectively, being possible to even pre-commission scenes. This is the case of the light recipes proposed by Philips Dynalight, such as Standard, focus, creativity, or presentation. Okay, so let's see how these features are incorporated in our Dynalight system, making it easy to manage the channels from every user interface. Here we have an Antumbra display that we want to commission with some tunable white features. In the first button, we'll program one of the pre-programmed scenes for the Signify recipes. To do so, we just need to select a preset function and then choose one scene or preset among the ones of the drop-down menu. In this case, creativity. In the next button, we can program a custom behavior. This will require to open the action chain editor and select a color temperature command. We will define the area, in this case, our DT8 area, the color temperature that can preferably be 4000 and the light output, let's say 50%. For the last two buttons, we'll use the color temperature ramps to let the user have more power to balance between cool and warm white. First, we will create the ramp down by selecting it from the menu. We will be able to limit the minimum color temperature, for example, to 3500 Kelvin, and the minimum channel level, which in this case is 10%. Remember to select the area where you want to apply these settings. To make it simple, let's just copy and paste the configuration in the last button. Now, all the settings are the same, but we want to change it to color temperature ramp up, where we'll just need to choose the maximum temperature in Kelvin for our ramp, in this case, 7000. Great news is that our Philips Dynalight controllers can easily replicate these dynamic variations of daylight thanks to DALI. That's right. Using slow transitions, we start off with a low level cool white light in the morning, ramp up to a high level white light in the middle of the day, and then back down to a low level warm white light in the evening. I do have one question though. Mm -hmm. Is this all possible just using DT8? It is possible both with DT8 and DT6. However, it's much more simple with DT8. Remember that for DT6, we need two drivers, one for cool white and another one for warm white. So we would need to create complex lookup tables to manage both outputs and match the color temperature and intensity that we want. So if we're looking for a more cost-effective and simple solution, DT8 is definitely the way to go. Exactly. I'll show you now the steps that we need to follow to create this biodynamic curve in System Builder. In this case, we'll select the first option and create an AMI area that will represent our curve. In projects with multiple spores, we could use a common area for sharing their rhythm among all of them. If needed, set a join mask. What we'll do next is creating points specifying the time, the level and the color temperature that corresponds to the curve we'd like to create. In my case, I'm using a curve similar to this, where the y-axis represents the color temperature in Kelvin and the x-axis represents the 24 hours of the day. Basically, the curve will make a transition between 8 points. For example, at 6 a.m. it will start with 30% and 2500 Kelvin and slowly increase to 40% by 7 a.m. 
from there, it will make a bigger change ramping up to 90% and 4500 Kelvin by 1030. The transitions between points are slowly so that they are not perceived. By default, the curve will update every minute, but if required, it's possible to adjust this setting. Once the curve is created, we can simulate it to see if we are happy with it. By default, every 5 seconds we will see a new Dynet2 message sent by the Ethernet gateway. Its message corresponds to one of the points of the curve. Note that between the last point of a day and the first one of the next day, the curve will wrap around, meaning that it will keep sending levels to make the smooth transition to the first level. This behavior will become configurable in a future release, to be able to stop sending levels once the last point is reached. When we are happy with our curve, we can export it and use it in future projects by importing it. So we've already learned a lot about biodynamic lighting and how to implement that on Philips Stanolite projects, but can you talk to me a little bit more about color control now? Sure. So previously we were striking a balance between two colors, warm white and cool white. Now we are opening up the possibilities with up to six different colors. The first ones, RGB, red, green and blue, are the three fundamental colors of light. However, to unlock even more possibilities, we have other three options. White, which enhances the quality of light, amber, which has its own light spectrum, and a free color, which helps us reducing energy consumption. And are we still talking about DALI here? Because I know that there are other protocols for color control, such as DMX. Yes, however, if you want to use color scenes by using the same DALI infrastructure, you can just simply use DALI DT8 drivers. The combination of DALI with our Dynet protocol allows us to control as many channels as we want. For example, by just a single command sent to all the DALI controllers, we can change the entire ambience of an entire building. Let's go see what that looks like in System Builder. Let's have a quick look on how a six dimension channel would look like. For that, I will create a new area and drag my already discovered channels, which already shows the RGB WAF type. To configure things, we can manually enter the values on the channel columns or directly set our preferred option in the editor. This enables one slider to control the level and another one for the color, which I can choose from different palettes. Alright, that's all the time we have today. Uh, before we go though, Noemi, did you want to sum up our three key takeaways? Sure. So first, that DALI 2 is not only a, an evolution of the DALI standard, but also a certification process and enhanced system interoperability. Next, the DT8 is absolutely the way to go when configuring these advanced features such as color control and tunable white because it saves us time but also reduces complexity in terms of commissioning and designing. And what's more important, how easy it's in Dynalite to commission these advanced features thanks to the System Builder commissioning tool but also to our DALI2 certified drivers and in terms of biodynamic curve with our Ethernet gateway. It really is just crazy to think how far lighting control has come from the humble on-off switch to all of a sudden we're able to create these really dynamic and vibrant environments that enhance people's lives. Again, thank you so much for watching. We really have enjoyed spending this time with you. Until next time, see, see you, you later. later.